Let's look at type 1 and type 2 errors when we're dealing with hypothesis tests. Imagine this here is a population. Imagine the circle represents the entire population. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some random sampling from it. Now, I'm not going to use a random generator, but you're going to just trust for a second that I'm being random with my selections. And whatever we get for our sample, we're going to run it under the null hypothesis that mu is equal to zero, and the alternative that mu is less than zero. So I'm randomly going to pick that one, that one, and that one, and that one. So I randomly picked four uh, values from this population. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, stat list, stat edit, and I'm going to put these numbers here into my stat list. What we're going to do is we're going to run a hypothesis test with these numbers. So they're in there. I'm going to go to stat, tests, t-test. We're going to run a t-test. And I'm going to switch it to data mode because I have my list uh, 1 data. Uh, my null hypothesis here is going to be mu is equal to 0. Most of this other information can stay the same. For my uh, alternative, I'm going to be pointing to the left because it's less than. And when I calculate, I'm going to get these results here. My p-value, the most important of these, is 0.039. And what I can see from that is it is in fact less than 0.05. So backing up a second, should we be rejecting the null? The answer is yes. p is less than alpha. We should reject the null. Now, if we go back and wanted to see if we did the right thing, that's going to be a little bit uh, more tricky here. If we were to add up all the values in this distribution, divide by the total, if we were to find the population, mean, what we would end up doing is saying 0 plus 1 plus 1, uh, add all these up, and it ends up adding to 0, and 0 divided by the total of 9 would be, again, 0. So the actual average of this population of all the numbers in the large bubble is 0. Now that's interesting here. We were tr originally trying to prove, uh, or disprove the null hypothesis that mu is equal to 0, and it turned out that mu was exactly 0. But we rejected. That means we made a mistake. And this type of mistakes, when you accidentally reject too much, is called a type 1 error. Now, a type 1 error is whenever you reject the null, but the null was actually right. So when you over-reject, when you reject by accident, you reject and make a mistake. In the court system, that would be like convicting an innocent person, since the uh, null hypothesis is that you're innocent, you rejected the null. You convicted. You said they were guilty, but they actually weren't. They were actually innocent. So you made a mistake by over-rejecting. Now the probability of a type 1 error is the Greek letter, represented by the Greek letter alpha. We've already talked about alpha values. Um, typically it's going to be something like 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. Uh, and that alpha value, again, like I said, it represents the probability of a type 1 error. So let's play that random sampling game again and see how we do. We're going to run the exact same test. Now this is a new population of numbers. So I'm going to randomly pick that one, that one, that one, and that one. So let's just say those were randomly picked. Again, don't question my methods right now. We're going to put this in our stat list. So I go to stat edit. And the values I have are negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and positive 1. I'm going to go to stat t-test. Should already be in data mode from before. Mu should already be set to 0. And the alternative should still be set to less. And so you should literally have to do nothing at this screen if you're coming up the last slide. And here's our new information here says that P is 0.19. Okay, so last time I checked, P of 0.19 is definitely nowhere close to 0.05. So 
we would fail to reject. What do we reject? No, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis that mu is equal to zero. Now if we were to go through and add all these up, we would get negative 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15. You get negative 15 as your total, and there's nine digits, uh, nine values in this uh, whole population. So your total divided by your number of values, and we give you one, negative 1 1.67 if we round off. So that's the mean of this whole population of all the numbers in the circle. The only problem is, is if the real mean is negative 1.67, and our null hypothesis was mu equals zero, that means that the null hypothesis is clearly wrong. The actual mu is not zero, it's something quite a ways away. So the null hypothesis is wrong, we should reject. However, we didn't. Because of our large p-value, we decided to not reject. That type of error, that type of mistake, logically is called a type two error. So when you don't reject, but you should have type 2 error. In the court system, that would be like letting a guilty person go free. Now, in most cases, including in court, you'll never know for sure if you were right. For example, O.J. Simpson is someone who was not convicted, he was let go, um, but it is widely assumed by most people that uh, he was in fact guilty. So if if in fact he was guilty, a type 2 error would have been made by letting him go. Just like alpha represents the probability of a type 1 error, the Greek letter beta, which looks like a capital B, uh, represents the probability of a type 2 error. Now just restructuring that same information in a different diagram, we're going to have the null hypothesis being true and the null hypothesis being false and then trying to figure out what we would do from there. If the null is true we should not reject, we should fail to reject. That would be a correct decision. And in the same way if the null hypothesis is false we should reject it. If it's false we should reject things that are false. So that makes sense too. Now going back up top, if it's true and we reject a true thing we've made a type 1 error. And if something is not true, if something is false, and we don't reject that false thing, we've made a type 2 error. So that's just another way of looking at that information. Now some practice. Did a study at significance level alpha is 0.01, my p-value is 0 0.008. Now when p is below alpha, that means we reject it. So we're thinking something where we rejected in this situation. Here. I'll slide that over. Despite this very low p-value, my null hypothesis later turned out to be correct. So we rejected so we rejected the null hypothesis later turned out to be correct. Null turned out later to be true. That would mean that we made a type 1 error. I did a study at significance level alpha is 0.05, my p-value was 0.08. Alpha was higher, so I did not reject. And here it tells us, thus I did not reject my null hypothesis. My null was in fact correct. So you did not reject. You could say you've accepted. Um, you did not reject, and the null was true. That sounds to me like you did the right thing. You should not reject it when it's true. So that was a correct decision. No errors involved. Next one, I did a study at significance level alpha is 0.05. My p-value was 0.06. Therefore, you did not reject. But later found out your null was incorrect. So that means that you did make a mistake. When the null is incorrect, you should be rejecting it. In this case, you did not reject it. That would be a type 2 error because the alternative was true, you did not reject. 
So now, a new study on the exact same thing that we just looked at. Everything else is the same, except what we did is we decided to change the significance level, alpha, from 0.05 to 0.10. The p-value was the same this time, 0.06, but because alpha was higher, we rejected the null and later found out the null was in fact correct. So in that case, if you reject the null and the null is correct, you did the right thing. Now, here's the part that's a little unsettling about this example, is all we did was change alpha, something that we could just pick out of the blues. We could make up our own alpha. In real life, alpha is not quite as flexible as what we're saying. Many publications require something such as 0.05 as kind of the standard that you would follow. Um, and in many cases, you directly would report your p-value, so people wouldn't get to say, oh, it's significant or not. It's more of, they got a p-value of this. You decide if it's significant. Last one, I did a study at significance level alpha is 0.01. My p-value is 0.10, so I did not reject. My null was, in fact, correct. So the null was, in fact, true. We did not reject. That would be a good decision. That would be a uh, smiley face here. And that's all for looking at type 1 and type 2 errors.